I am Lizzie with Long Distance Gamers. We are a group of friends who play games remotely due to living in different states. Today I am talking about Unforgiven, the Lincoln assassination trial. What do I think about it? And more importantly, how do we play it remotely? Now before we get started, there are two different sides. The side running the game, they for sure have a copy of the game and they play it mostly like normal. The remote side may or may not have a copy. We will be going over how the remote side sets up and how the remote side responds to the game. So this is Unforgiven set up for remote play. The first thing that has happened is we have set the cards in piles for their individual colors. This is of course trial phase one. We have put the two and the three in the stacks of individual colors and then stacked them on top. And then they get put aside for later use. The side running the game will go ahead and say what all the visible ones are starting from the inside so it's easy to set up. So for instance we have a gray carriage, a gray assassinations calling card, a white bullet, a black last hours of Abraham Lincoln, and a white Whitney revolver. I just use just a plain deck of playing cards so that way I can put those upside down for the unknown cards and then the running side will again state what the other ones these next six are then we put two more sets and then we finally get our last up front ones we label the columns one through nine for ease of play for the jurors after everyone has drafted which you would just show up to the hand whether you hold it up to the camera or put it on a side screen so that way the remote side could easily see what they have or you could also send them a picture and then they would just state who they want to keep and passes along like normal the dice are rolled by the running side and then the remote side will just go ahead and go through all the dice find the individual sides and put them out like so. Once everything is set up, we are ready to start. So everyone drafts like normal. The prosecution starts, so they will say what die they want, which we just refer to them by the side, or they'll say the one closest to me. So they'll, so Kitty, that is Kitty. She'll say, I will take the five and she'll grab that and it'll be put down towards her. And then I will go ahead and take the one. Once both die are taken, the running side will go ahead and roll first for prosecution. And then for defense, so then we just have to find that. So we have the ear over here, the hearsay, and then we apply to national interest. Then we are ready to start the game. Prose prosecution takes the first turn. Maybe they would want to take this because they don't want me getting it considering I already have the eye. So they would go ahead and take that, add it to their hand. we would go ahead and turn these over which the running side would go ahead and say what they actually are so maybe it would be the red Lincoln's chair and blue map of Booth's escape route so those become visible okay, so then it is my turn and I will go ahead and I will go ahead and grab this one so I will grab from eight I will grab the map to Booth's route now it is instantaneous so this moves one step closer towards me and that just gets discarded the game continues on like this if you want to try to sway one of these juries jurors you would just say you're swaying the a you'll pay the hearts for instance or you could pay these alternative ones which once these are used they are removed from the game and then if you want to sway one from your hand you would just say so and then you would play it once something is played from your hand i would keep what is in your hand on one side so once it's played it's very visible played versus in your hand so that way it's easier to keep it separate that's just my recommendation as playing remotely you do have to think about what is easiest for the remote side to see as well as it it's a little bit different for spacing. The game continues on until one of the three things happen. Either you convince four jury jurors to join your side, or you get this justice all the way to your side, whether it be in guilty or innocent, 
or all three of the trial phases have been complete. And then whoever has the most victory points is the winner. And there are tiebreakers in the rule book if you do happen to have a tie for victory points. So that is Unforgiven, the Lincoln Assassination Trial. As you can see, playing remotely does provide a little bit interesting ways of dealing with the drafting mainly. The dice add a little bit of complications. However, I don't find that rolling the dice and finding the exact side is too much of an issue for... You'll do it at the very beginning of the game for these six dice, and then you'll do it for two dice for each of the three trials, and you might do it for a dice or two throughout the game. It's really not too much to go through and find what you need. So that is okay. I don't have an issue with it. A bigger issue is actually the colorblind friendliness of this. It's very hard to know if you have a blue card for a red card for some colorblind players. So being able to say, okay, well, you have a blue card, it doesn't mean much. So then they have to be, okay, so is this an instantaneous card? Or is this a card that gives me a benefit later on? So you kind of have to know those intricacies. And maybe some players around the table would have to help you with that. Unfortunately, the only way I could see fixing it would be to put a little tag in the corner. Either just a letter showing, you know, this, this is a red fact. So you could either write fact or write R. Just to give whoever is colorblind in your group the ability to play this game without having to rely on other players. The gameplay itself is very fresh. Uh, it does feel similar to Seven Wonders Duel. However, it has a lot more going on. There is also more luck with the dice, I feel. The drafting is very similar as you take a card and it will reveal the two cards underneath it and so on and so forth. You can only take what is actually available to you. That's a fairly common way of doing this pyramid drafting way, which is interesting. I do really like the tug and pull that these juror cards represent. How you can convince someone that is more logical one way, or you could always do a one-time alternate. So it's a lot of variability, a lot of changing on how you want to play the game. So this is actually a very solid game. It does get an eight and a half out of 10 for me. I hope you enjoy it. And for remote play, it is fairly easy. I don't see a high patience level at all with this. The biggest thing would just be to separate out the cards in each of the trials by color, and then hunting and finding the dice a few times throughout the game, which doesn't add much time at all. So that's what I think about Unforgiven, the Lincoln assassination trial. Until next time, just remember to have fun, be present, and be you. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to us. We would love to hear from you. Also, if you find value in our content, please like, comment, or subscribe. Let a friend or family member know that we exist. Help us spread our channel and bring remote gaming to a table near you. Thank you very much, and have a great day.